Our universe is extremely vast. It's been centuries since scientists and astronomers began researching our solar system, and their findings are fascinating. But even till now, more than half universe is still yet not known. Everyone one knows each of the planets that make up our solar system is distinct from the others in its geological makeup and a number of other respects. The arrival of a new planet at this point in human history, with all of its cutting-edge technology and scientific discoveries, has become a source of growing optimism and anticipation among the scientific community. Talking about the arrival of new planets, a few years back an object was discovered larger than Pluto. What is that? To know about it, stay with us till the end of the video. Let's get started. How was the 10th planet discovered? Is there something we know about the rotation of new planet? Should Pluto be classified as a planet because of Eris? In 1930, Pluto was discovered and designated as the 9th planet. After that, the hunt began for a 10th planet beyond Pluto's orbit. Unconfirmed stories and fringe speculations have been the only outcomes up until lately. In 2005, scientists discovered that Xena, now called Eris and considered the 10th planet in the solar system, is bigger than Pluto. Observations made by a team of astronomers at the University of Bonn in Germany led by Professor Frank Bertoldi are published online today in Nature. Using a 30-meter telescope in Spain, they claim to have measured reflected solar energy from Xena, or 2003 UB313 as it is formally known. The result is that UB313 is nearly three times as wide as Pluto, at a distance of around 3,000 kilometers. Given that Neptune was discovered in 1846, this would constitute UB313 the largest solar system's object discovered to date. Since it was announced last year that UB313 had been discovered 15 billion kilometers beyond Earth, astronomers have been discussing the object's status. They called it a filthy rock and said it wasn't a planet, but Pluto's supporters said otherwise. In a cooperative effort that included David Rabinovitz, Mike Brown, and Chuck Trujillo, the dwarf planet Eris was first spotted on January 5, 2005, using data from October 21, 2003. Due in part to situations occurring that would have created controversy around Haumea, the announcement of the finding was delayed until July 29, 2005. Over several years, the search team has actively looked for and contributed to the finding of more big TNOs in the outer solar system. The crew's automatic image capturing method eliminated all entities traveling at less than 1.5 arc seconds per hour to limit the amount of false positives returned, meaning that the image of Eris was not found during routine observations on October 21, 2003, at Palomar Observatory, California. The scientists reanalyzed their old studies with a lower restriction on the angular motion, sorting through the old excluded photographs by eye, because Sedna was traveling at 1.75 arc sec slash h when it was discovered in 2003. The reanalysis found that Eris was moving more slowly than the rest of the stars in the sky in January of 2005. In order to estimate how far away Eris is, subsequent observations were made to calculate its orbit. As a result of the controversy surrounding the July 27 announcement of a separate team in Spain's finding of a massive TNO they had been watching, Haumea, the observing and calculating teams decided to disclose their findings of the bright objects Eris and Maki Maki on July 29 instead of waiting. Images of Eris taken before its retrieval on September 3, 1954, have been dated. Eris possesses a moon, which was eventually dubbed Dysnomia when more observations were made public in October 2005. Using Dysnomia's orbital observations, scientists were able to conclude that Eris had a mass higher than Pluto's in June 2007. The rotation time of Eris is hard to determine because its brightness seldom changes as it spins. By 2020, long-term observations of Eris's luminosity will have provided a reliable estimate of its rotation period, which is approximately 14.56 Earth days. 
Due to poor long-term analysis of Eris's rotation, previous estimations of its rotation period obtained extremely imprecise numbers varying tens of hours. The orbital period of Eris's massive moon Dysnomia is very close to, but not quite equal to, the time of Eris's assumed slow rotation. As a result of Dysnomia's gravitational pull, Eris's rotation has slowed, but the two bodies have not yet achieved tidal locking, where Eris's rotation is synced with Dysnomia's orbit. Eris's axial tilt has not been measured, but it is likely to be identical to Dysnomia's orbital inclination, which is roughly 78 degrees with respect to the ecliptic. If this was the case, then in 2018 30% of Eris's northern hemisphere would have been constantly lighted by sunlight, and in 2020 70% of the hemisphere would be bathed in sunlight. After 15 years of debate, scientists are still debating whether or not Pluto should be considered a planet. One group of specialists is arguing that Pluto and other bodies in our planetary system should be promoted to planet status. The review paper Moons Are Planets, Scientific Usefulness vs. Cultural Teleology in the Taxonomy of Planetary Science was published in the academic publication. Pluto has been officially recognized as the ninth planet in the solar system ever since its discovery in 1930. Pluto's small, icy neighbors in the Kuiper Belt were only discovered in 1992, though. An example of such a neighbor is the heavenly body Eris. A debate ensued as to whether or not Eris, the tenth planet, should be recognized as part of the solar system. In 2006, the Yao revised its definition of a planet in a way that demoted Pluto to the lesser planetary classification it shares with its neighbors. The International Astronomical Union defines a planet as a celestial body that orbits the Sun and has sufficient gravity to prevent other objects from entering or leaving its orbit. Since Pluto is both spherical and has an orbit around the Sun, it satisfies the first two requirements. The pull of Neptune's gravity, however, affects Pluto. Moreover, the dwarf planet has an orbital path that takes it past other Kuiper Belt objects. The new paper's authors claim that planetary scientists disagree with the Yao's definition and instead use a geophysical-slash-geological definition of a planet that is not limited by a body's current orbital state. Although it is not clear who has the majority view, there is evidence that scientists disagree with the Yao's planetary definition. In a 2019 presentation at the University of Colorado, former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine declared his opinion that Pluto is a planet. According to the Yao's statement, the organization supports free debate and respects all scientific opinions. The General Assembly meets every three years to make scientific decisions for the Yao. The estimated 100,000 pieces of icy, primordial debris that slowly encircle the Sun beyond the orbit of Neptune are collectively referred to as Kuiper Belt objects. In a scathing rebuttal, the UB313 fan group insisted that Pluto, not their team, was more deserving of the KBO label. When American astronomer Clyde Tombaugh discovered Pluto in 1930, one of his first observations was that the planet's orbital plane was peculiar. To be precise, it's tilted at an angle of 17 degrees relative to the horizontal plane in which the other planets orbit. Because of the egg shape of its orbit around the Sun, it passes within Neptune's orbit for 20 of every 248 years. Recent discoveries of the first precise measurements of UB313's size lend significant support to this camp. If the findings of a 19-person panel convened by the International Astronomical Union to define what defines a planet are approved, Pluto might be demoted from the club of the solar system's elite to the status of a Kuiper Belt object, KBO. Otherwise, UB313 and possibly a lot of others to the list of planets will have to be added to the list of planets. Compared to the plane in which the Sun, Earth, and other planets circle, this body is extremely tilted at an angle of 45 degrees. That's because no one bothered to check in that direction before, which is why it went undetected. Nearly everything in the solar system lies within a few degrees of the ecliptic, the main plane of the planetary system. Pluto, unlike the other planets, is only 17 degrees off this primary plane. In their search for asteroids and comets, astronomers typically examine the same part of the sky as the other planets. 
New developments in telescope technology also played a role in this finding, as the object is just fainter than what earlier sky surveys telescopes were able to spot. So that's all for today's video, if you like this video, click the like and the bell icon button. We'll have another video for you soon. Take care until then.